Okay, Hannah, here we go. Number 51. <clears throat> um, we're going to use synthetic division on this. Synthetic division is basically a shorthand way of dividing polynomials or dividing a polynomial by a linear binomial. This is pretty key. Um, if what you're dividing by is a binomial, there's only two terms, right? One, two, and the x is to the first power. That means it's linear. There's just an x there. It's not raised to the square root of any power. So if you have like an x minus 3, you can use a synthetic division. It's a shorthand way. You just write the coefficients down of the, of the divisor. And that's what's in front of the x squared. That's just a 1. And you have a 1 in front of the x. And then you have a minus 22. And this, uh, this linear binomial is in the form of x minus a. And you put a, you put a right, right in here, okay? And in this case, a, since this is already in the form of x minus 3, a is just 3. <coughs> now you need to be real careful of this, because if it's uh, x plus 3, a is not a positive 3, a is a negative 3. Because your x minus a minus 3, which would equal the x plus 3. So a would be a negative 3 in, in this case. But it's not. It's already in the x minus form. So we don't have to worry about that. But just watch that for the one that they give you in the test. So put a bar down here. Bring your first one straight down, okay? Number 1. Then you take this 3 and multiply it by this coefficient. 3 times 1 is 3, and you put it right here. You don't subtract, but you add these, okay? 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 times 4, <clears throat> multiply 3 times 4 is 12. You put it right here, and then you add these. Minus 22 plus 12 is a minus 10. Okay, so this last one, put a little box right by it, right there. And that is your remainder, okay? And so this uh, this first term is going to be your number. This next term is going to be the coefficient of your next power up, which is just x. You just you just start with the one right by the remainder, and that the first one is your number, and then the next one is to x to the first power coefficient. And if there's more, then it's the coefficient of x to the second power, and so forth. So. Uh, it's 4, and then it would be plus uh, just a single x, 1x, but you don't have to write the 1, so we'll just delete that. So this is x plus 4, and then the remainder is a minus 10. And what it, it's a minus 10 of what you're dividing it by, right? Minus 10 of x minus 3. And that should be your answer, x plus 4 minus 10 of x minus 3. This is like a fraction. This is as much of the divisor that, that it goes in. And that checks out with our answer right here. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's uh, cruise along here. Determine the remainder of each division problem using the remainder theorem. Uh, remainder theorem. Remainder theorem basically says um, if the polynomial function p of x is divided by x minus a then the remainder r is p of a so um, remember this x minus a term this is a binomial linear binomial x minus a uh, so a is negative 3 if this is x minus something it's, it's negative it's already a uh, 3 so a a here, a is equal to 3. If this was x plus 3, a would be a negative 3. We just talked about that. So a is 3. So basically they're saying... <coughs> so, uh, you can find the remainder just by plugging this 3, let me undo that, right into this polynomial. 
So A is 3, so all you have to do is just plug this 3 value or this 3 value right in for X, right? Everywhere it is. 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 13. This is the remainder theorem. Add these together. 9 minus 12 plus 13, and that equals... Let's see, 9, uh, 13 minus 12 is 1, 1 plus 9 is equal to 10, which is our answer. Factor, factor each trinomial. Factoring is not so bad, but when you get this x in front of this thing, you can't do that. You have to have a positive x squared, okay? So let's just, um, let's multiply uh, negative 1 times this entire thing, right? So if we have negative 1 times a minus x squared plus 12x plus 45, that's going to equal to um, you know what? Let me just say this just a slightly different way. Um, Let's, uh, let's pull a negative 1 out. Maybe that's a better way to say it. So if you pull a negative 1 out, this is going to make that positive. This is going to make that negative. Minus 12x, minus 45. Does that make sense? Let's see. So if you have minus 1 times these positives, if you go ahead and multiply this through, you'd end up with what we started with. Minus x squared. Minus 1 times minus 12x is a positive 12x and positive 45. Okay, so and then let's just leave this out here and only worry, let's only worry about what's in the middle. Okay, so let's just factor this part that's in the middle. Now we're starting with a positive x squared. We can factor that, right? You got an x over here and an x over here. What times what is 45? That when you add them, to a negative 45. So when you add them together, it's going to be a negative 12. Since this is a negative and this is a negative, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative, right? No, negative. There we go. Okay, so uh, let's see. 9 times 5. Uh, if you have a minus 9, positive 5, that's a 4, nowhere near 12x. we got to go bigger. 9 times 5, um, 15, 15 times 3. Since this is negative, the bigger one has got to be negative, minus 15, positive 3. Does that work? We have a minus 1 times this whole thing, right? Um, still. So, uh, does that work? Let's see, x squared minus 15x plus 3x, plus 3x minus 15x is going to be a minus 12x, positive 3 times a minus 15 is a minus 45. Yeah, that works. But we have this negative 1 out here, and you can just write that as negative if you want to, x plus 3, x minus 15. Don't try to factor a negative x squared. Pull a negative 1 out and factor only positive, positive terms. Anyway, that's our answer for that one. Um, let's go ahead and just try to finish this. might be a longer video, but we'll, we'll go for it. Use a special factoring formula to factor the following. Okay, if you guys can't use notes, how are you going to remember the special factoring formulas, right? There's two of them, okay? Uh, we have A cubed plus B cubed, the sum of two cubes, basically. And that is equal to a plus b outside of a squared minus a b plus b squared. Okay, that one, this is a difference right here. So this one doesn't apply, but your problem on your test might be like this. So I don't know, maybe you can store it inside your TI-83. Just Google how to do that so you can reference it. Don't need this one, but we do need the difference of cubes, difference of two cubes, and this is a cubed minus b cubed equals a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b 
squared. Okay, so <clears throat> what does this stuff mean? We have 64z cubed, and we need this a number cubed. Well, the 64 is not cubed here, only the z. So if we change this into uh, 4, what is 4 cubed? 4 times 4 is 16 times 4, 16 times 4 is 64. Yeah, so this is 4 cubed. So we can write this, we change colors. We can write this as y cubed minus 4 z cubed. Okay, so we have a number cubed minus a number cubed. So in this case, uh, a is equal to y, right? y cubed, a cubed, and b, b is equal to 4 z minus b cubed minus 4 z cubed and all we do is plug these things in a which is y minus 4 z which is b a squared which is y so it's y squared plus a times b or y times 4 z we'll say 4 y z plus b squared b is 4 z uh, so it's 4 z squared, right? Well, 4z squared, we can we can play with that. That is 4 times 4 is 16. That is uh, plus 16z squared. Everything else should be the same. And I think that matches our answer. And so that's how we use the difference of two cubes. Okay, 145 solve. Okay, so when we see like a 4 and an x squared and an 8 and an x or something that we can take out of both those terms. Let's get everything over to one side, right? Let's uh, subtract 8x from both sides, so then that would leave us 4x squared minus 8x. What do we have left on the right-hand side? Well, 8x minus 8x is 0. Yeah, we have 0 over there. Okay, so we have, uh, we can take, we have similar stuff in each of these terms that we can factor out, right? What can we factor out? Well, we can factor out an x. How about the numbers? 4. You can get a 4 out of each one of those, right? Okay, so what times 4x is going to give you the 4x squared? Well, just a single x. What times 4x is going to give you a negative 8x? How about just minus 2? And this is still equal to 0, right? And does this, does this factor work? 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times a minus 2 is a minus 8x. So yeah, that works. Okay, so what we have here is, um, is two, two products equal 0, right? This times this equals 0. So what would make that true? Well, if this one was 0, 0 times this would equal 0, or... If this one was 0, it would also be true. So we can set this up as two different ways. We can say 4x is equal to 0. That would make it true. Or if it, we had x minus 2 equals 0, that would also make it true. Well, this one here, we can just divide both sides by 4. And x is equal to 0. 0 divided by 4 is 0. This one, let's uh, add 2 to both sides. And get rid of these twos, and you have x is equal to 2. So our two answers are 0 and 2, which is what your answer book says. That's good. like it when that happens. Okay, last one, and we'll be done with chapter 5. Answer the question. One square, got to draw the square. Bam, they say square, draw it. Has a side 4 inches longer and the side of a second square. Let's draw the, the other square bigger, right? If this is x, well, this is x plus 4, right? x plus 4. If the area of the larger square is 49 inches, okay, so x plus 4 squared is equal to 49 inches, okay? Find the length of the side of each square. Okay, so how do we solve this? 
Well, we can go ahead and expand this out if we want to, and then factor it and solve for x. But since it's already in this form, let's just take the square root of both sides. The square root of this squared is just going to equal, because the square root cancels with the squared sign, basically, right? That's just going to be x plus 4, and the square root of 49 is plus or minus 7, right? So we can say x plus 4 is equal to 7, or x plus 4 is equal to negative 7. Subtract 4, subtract 4. Uh, this first case gives us x is equal to 3. In this case, if we minus 4 and minus 4, we say x is equal to negative 11. It's also a, a valid solution, but it is not one for the size of this square, because then that would say that the side is a negative 11 inches, and you can't have a negative number for the length of a side of a square. So this solution is whacked. We're just going to go with the 3. So this one is 3, and this one is 3. 3 plus 4, this one is 7, and this one is 7. Obviously, 7 times 7 is 49. And you could have figured this out a lot earlier, but they might not be so intuitive to see the answer, so you just need to know how to do it. So the, the lengths of the two sides are 7 and 3, which you have in your answer book. Good for them. All right. Um, We'll uh, pick up the uh, Chapter 6 review questions in just a minute.